So in this video, we're going to see how to get some details about a linear regression model that we've trained in OAC. So here's my data set, which is sample other lines, a classical data set with some sales data and a bunch of attributes. And I have a couple of years of data. And I'm going to train a linear regression model to predict sales. So I'm just going to create a data flow, select my data set, and add a step for predicting uh, numeric prediction and select a linear regression uh, algorithm for the training. And I'm going to leave all the parameters as default, just generate a linear regression to calculate sales. So I'll save this data flow and save it. And this is going to create a model called PL linear regression here. So this takes a few seconds. There are 9,000 rows in my data set, so it's not a very big one. And if I go now in the machine learning tab, I see this model we just created. So I could go and run scenarios or apply it to see its quality. But in this video, I'd like to show how to see quality of the model without yet running it. There are many information about the model quality and its metadata under the inspect menu of any ML model in OAC. So first, there is a quality tab. In this case, for linear regression, it's showing me the, regre the residual value distribution. How far are the predictions falling away from the, value, the actual value, along with a series of different statistics about the model, which you can see on the right. Next, I have a few other tabs such as access where I can set the visibility of my model, details indicating to me what were the parameters used when running it and what were the input columns, so input as in my input testing data set, and a very important tab with related data set. And here I can see several things pertaining to a linear regression model. Let's start with drivers to begin with. When I click on this, I'm opening a data set you can see in the background, so I clicked and I then close the window and I'm left with the data set. So I have a bug on my environment, so I have to click on data and back on visualize. But this is a data set just like any other data set now. And I can visualize drivers, coefficients, and correlation. What is that? So let me make this be a stacked bar chart. I can see which of the columns from my input testing data set are really impacting the, the linear regression negatively or positively. So which, one, which are the influencer driver so I can filter away anything that has a low impact in that uh, equation and I now have a visibility on exactly what are the drivers I can set visualizations uh, labels and understand what's going on so this is metadata about the model that is available on every machine learning model and drivers are obviously for linear regression if I go back to inspect menu in the related tab another tab that is very interesting are the statistics. So this is simply allowing me to see the same statistics as what we saw. So again, click, close the window, and here is my data set. This is basically one row with all of these measurements, measuring quality of the model. So I can visualize this as a table. Actually, as a pivot table is probably better. So let me pick a pivot table. I can put the uh, value labels as rows, and then that will be uh, more readable. So I can see, the, obviously, the R-square, these uh, different statistics about the model itself. These statistics will be depending on which algorithms we have picked, but this is what it is for linear regression. Going back to inspect, the third tab is residual. So this one is very useful, but it is tricky. So I'm opening it. And I can see that there are uh, there is predicted value, actual value, and residual value. But the problem is that the way that it is right now, this is all aggregated into a single row. But in real, in reality, this data set has 9,000 rows of data, the training grain. So if we go to the data and open the data set, we will see that detail. So all we have to do is to duplicate a metric column as, and set it as an attribute so it marks a value for every row. So let me set this one as an attribute. Oh, so I'll call this actual attribute. That's it. I'm saving this data set now, and I have one more column. So now I can show a scatter plot with predicted and actual. So now we have, let me swap this, actual in X and predicted in Y. So this is the uh, scatter plot of the prediction and if I want to compare this with a straight line so we cannot overlay multiple series or actually multiple metrics on a scatter plot so I can use a visual trick and overlay 
a uh, straight line here, which is actual with actual over the existing chart. So I'm using the free form OAC canvas capability for this. So this is a bit of a visual trick. So that, that gives me a, a sort of a workaround for this uh, missing chart type for now. Now, another capability is simply to um, use that column that we've added. So let me say, show me actual. Uh, so actual by attribute actual and sort this by metric at actual value, high to low, okay? And let, let me make this be a line. So these are actual values in X and actual values in Y, but obviously the spread is here, is, is not linear. So I can then represent the prediction next to it as a scatter. And maybe in this case, because my values are wide, let me use a logarithmic axis. So this is one way to represent the quality of the model. I can see the actual line and where the um, prediction fit on on that uh, on that line. So let me duplicate that chart and change this with residuals, for instance. Now I'm seeing the value of residuals. Clearly, we seem to have negative residuals for high values of x. So that's another way to represent the quality of the model, but still based on that residuals uh, data set. Now, another way is just to represent residuals groups. I just drag residuals into category grammar, and this is creating bins of residuals. So let me create a count of records as well, just so that we can show count of records by these residual bins. So that's a calculation. And now I can show by the size of residuals, the number of records. So that's exactly the chart we were looking at earlier under the quality tab in our expect. I can change the number of bins just like I did earlier on. And this is the distribution of residuals. So how many records fall uh, uh, far away or, or not far away from the value, the expected value. Now I can represent bins also for actual values. And what's the residual per per actual bin. So these are bins of actual value. And it's actually the real way to represent this would be to set a residual aggregation of average by record. So what's the average re residual by record depending on the actual expected value? So these are various visualizations that you can do to validate and qualify the model based on the data set set in the inspect menu.